conflict management process so as we already know conflict is disagreement between two or more persons and this serious disagreement is shown as conflict and whenever any conflict arises it follows several stages and those stages are potential opposition of incompatibility cognition and personalization number three intentions to behave and number four actual behavior and number five the result or outcomes so this process is diagrammed in this table here stage one indicates potential opposition and its antecedent conditions are communication structure and personal variables in the stage two it indicates personalized and uh, cognition and personalization due to the antecedent conditions it create two conflict one is perceived and another is felt conflict we are going to discuss in our next uh, in our next slides that what is all about perceived and felt conflict based on your feelings of conflict you determine your intention what you will do and there are five intention competing collaborating compromising avoiding and accommodating based on your intention you will choose one intention and based on your intention you will behave so whenever you behave there will be two behavior one is yours behavior and another is other parties reaction and based on these things there will be two outcome that is stress five outcome may be positive outcome may be negative if it is a good conflict then it will increase good performance and on the other hand if it turns into a very bad conflict then it will decrease the group's performance so let's discuss about these steps stage one potential opposition or incompatibility the potential opposition or incompatibility relates to the conditions necessary for conflicts to arise Com here first thing is communication due to the communication gap people misunderstand and due to their misunderstanding they are uh, they gives the opposition side of from you next thing is a structure of the organization and it is viewed as a positive opposition block as conflicts evolve between two different departments here different departments will not help and support you and you will get involved into the conflict next one is personal variables and these variables are probably the most likely to cause conflict in the organization and on an individual basis as there are invariably clashes in the personality types within an organization so there are some people who don't like you that's why if you work for anything they will go against you so these are these are the personal variables the next stage is cognition and personalization so this relates that this conf organization and conflict is personalized and people say i will see you in the organization in this phase the potential for conflict becomes actualized perceived conflict relates to individual or group actually seeing the conflict arise and affect them it creates the awareness of the problem so perceived conflict uh, makes them feel that makes them feel that there is conflict and felt conflict creates emotion and this emotion may be angerness their craziness and something like that if the condition cited in stage one negatively affects something that one party cares about then the potential for opposition or incompatibility becomes actualized so stage one is potential and stage two is actualized in other words, A may be aware that B and A are in serious disagreement, but it may not make a tense or anxiety and it may have no effect whatsoever on A's affection toward B. It is at the felt level when individuals become emotionally involved that parties experience anxiety, tension, frustration and hostility. So these are the felt level of the conflict. The stress theory is intention. Intention indicates how you will behave based on your perceptions regarding conflict and your emotional attitude. These intentions are decisions to act in a certain way. So to determine what would be intention, two different things have been identified. Let's look at the figure. One is assertiveness and another is cooperativeness. Assertiveness indicates whether you give importance to yourself or not 
and cooperativeness indicates whether you give importance to the other party related to conflict or not. So if you give yourself importance, you are assertive. If you do not give yourself importance, you are unassertive. On the other hand, if you give importance to other party, you are cooperative. And if you do not give importance to other party, then it is uncooperative. So let's see the figure. If you do not give importance to yourself and also to the other party, you are avoiding a style. If you give only importance to yourself but not to any other party, you are in the competing style. If you give importance to other party only, not to yourself, you are accommodating a style. And on the other hand, if you give high importance on yourself and also high importance on the other party, then you are in a collaborating style style and in the middle way is the compromising style that is you give your, yourself importance 50 percent or middle way and another party 50 percent or middle way let's see the description first one is competing when one party seeks to satisfy his or her own interest regardless of the impact on other party to the conflict then it is called as competing that you give your concern highest important and another party's concern very low or no importance collaborating indicates giving highest importance on both parties this strategy attempts to satisfy the concern of all groups of all, uh, of all groups by working through differences and seeking solutions so that everyone gains as a result a marketing department and a manufacturing department that meets on a regular basis to plan mutually acceptable production schedules are collaborating next one is avoiding a style in this style you are staying neutral and you do not give importance to yourself and also to the other party the finance department that sticks its head in the sand and hopes that dissension about budgetary dissension about budgetary allocations will blow over its exhibiting avoidance next one is accommodating accommodating indicates that you accept and you don't think about yourself you accept the other party this allows other groups to satisfy their own concerns at the expense of one's own group so you accept you take the responsibilities and you don't give pressure to other party and last one is compromising and it is a mid-range of both cooperativeness and assertiveness you give sacrifice of something and other party gives sacrifice of something combining these two you bring a solution this is the compromising style stage four is the behavior so behavior indicates how you will behave so based on your intention in previous stage you are going to behave and this behavior is only visible in the reality the behavior stage indicates the statements actions and reactions made by the conflicting parties these conflict behaviors are usually overt attempts to implement each party's intentions but these behaviors have a stimulus quality that is separate from intentions as a result of miscalculations or unskilled enactments, overt behavior sometimes deviate from original intention. So what is the suggestion? Behave according to your intention. Sometimes your intention is positive but you behave negatively. On the other hand, sometimes you, you thought that you will go for competition. But when you face the person, you go for compromising. Or accommodating a style so these are the problems so behave according to your intentions stage 5 is outcome it is the result occurred due to the conflicting behaviors so the action reaction interplay between the conflicting parties result in consequences these outcomes may be functional or positive or dysfunctional or negative so let's go for functional conflict Functional conflict is a confrontation between groups that enhances and benefits the organization's performance. Let's have an example. Two departments in a hospital may be in the conflict over the most efficient and adaptive method of delivering health care to the low-income rural families. Two departments agree on the goal but not on the means to achieve it. Whether the outcome 
the low income rural families probably will end up with better medical care once the conflict is settled on the other hand dysfunctional conflict when it hinders or gives obstacles in achieving the organizational goal management must seek to eliminate this dysfunctional conflict beneficial conflicts can often turn into harmful ones in most cases the point at which functional conflict becomes dysfunctional is impossible to identify precisely but managers must be aware of the fact because functional conflict indicates disagreement and this disagreement will create positive benefits on the other hand dysfunctional conflict indicates it is also a conflict and disagreement and due to this disagreement the result will be negative the same level of stress and conflict that creates a healthy and positive movement toward goals in one group may prove extremely disruptive and dysfunctional in another group so manager must be aware of the fact so that's all about the conflict process